Hi, my name is Jim Bashirs. I'm a field applications engineer for Pepperell and Fuchs here in the United States and the CTSS for magnetic, inductive, and capacitive sensors in the Americas. Uh, today we're going to look at installing and how to operate a basic packedware demonstration, including the DTM and the USB I.O. link adapter. So first, let's go ahead and open up a web browser. I use Chrome and go to Pepperell and Fuchs's website. And we want to load the software package that has Pactware, the DTM configurator, and the USB adapter driver in it. So we'll go to Products, Industrial Communications, I.O. Link, we want software tools after that. And if we view all products in the group, not a very big group, <laughs> there's only one. So the offline parameterization tool is what we want to use. So we click on that, go to software, and it shows up as a link down at the bottom. We will click on that and download it. Okay, now that that has downloaded, we will drag it onto our desktop. And we do not need the web page anymore. Let's go ahead and open this zip file. And we want to extract all of this. I'm going to put it on the desktop in a folder. OK, that showed up here. Let's drag it down here so we can see it better. And now we do not need the zip program anymore. So let's delete that and double click on the parameterization tool. Okay, you can see there's a few folders and a couple of license agreements and readme files in here. What we wanna do is click on this IO link param tool setup program and this will conveniently download everything we need into it. So we wanna make changes and we like English here in the United States. You have an option of either English or German. And as you can see, we'll get Pactware 5.0 with uh, the Direct Connect version. And then we will get the IO Link USB Master DTM and the IO DD Interpreter DB DTM, which is uh, a really important part of this. So just like everybody does, go ahead and read and accept the license agreements. I know we all fully read those. We'll give this a little bit of time to go ahead and load. So you can see up here as this is operating that we have installed Pactware 5.0 already and the Pactware 5.0 version with uh, direct connection in it. So we have those two so far. And we have the DTM configurator installed down here close to the bottom. So that's done. That program can be run independently of Pactware. Okay, so we have everything done. Uh, we don't need the tool anymore, so let's close that out. And we're going to, before running Pactware, uh, make a DTM file. So let's open the DTM configurator. And you can see here I have one for a UC4000 already. And the way I got that, uh, there's actually a few ways you can do it. If you have your IODD file in a folder, you can click on this and it will convert that into a DTM. If you have a zip file with a lot of IODD files in it, you can compile them all at once with this button here. And if you want to, if you're out in the field or you're at your desk or whatever, and you want to go and you don't know where to get these, you can go to a, a website called IODDfinder.com and it will automatically find the IODD file for the device that you want to operate and download it to your computer. So that being the easiest and most up-to-date, let's look for that. Now we have a UC4000 up here. Let's go back and find out how we got that. So we'll type UC4000. If I was to put uh, Pepperell and Fuchs's vendor name or ID in here, it would populate this box with every IODD file for Pepperell and Fuchs, and 
there would be thousands of them. So you really don't want to do that if you know the device name. That and IO Link revision, I mean, it would just come and put everything in there that it found that had the right revision on it. So let's go for UC4000. That's a pretty unique uh, nomenclature for Pepperell and Fuchs. So you can see here that it found two versions of the UC4000. It has the uh, two digital outputs and the IUEP version is uh, Pepperell and Fuchs uh, analog output ultrasonic. So both of these are going to be loaded. If you notice up here, it says it's a UC4030 GM 2EP IOV15 and it also includes the IUEP. So both of these sensors can be configured with the same DTM file. So when you do that, you click on get data from IODD finder. Since we have that, we want these two. So that will be included in this file. So we'll click on one of them. Down at the bottom, it says add selected IODD. We'll click on that. We don't have any FDT frame applications running, so we'll click on that. And we would, in this case, want to replace it because I already have it. You won't have that if it's not available. So since we have everything on there, you can see we've got the 2EP and the IUEP version. We are going to, let's refresh it just to make sure. Okay, it did keep it. Let's close this. This is very important here. It says, please ensure that the next startup of the FDT frame application, which is packed where the device catalog is updated. So we want to make sure we do that. Now we're going to run Pactware that we now that we have a DTM file for the sensor. Let's click on Pactware here. First time you operate Pactware, it may take a little bit of time for it to compile itself. So we're going to skip ahead on this so we don't have to wait for the uh, program to compile for the first time. And we're getting an opening now. Here we go. So now that we have Pactware open, we need to update the device catalog. So we can either go over here on the right to the device catalog tab over here, and we can see that it's already here, but had we installed a new DTM file, we go down here to update device catalog and click on that. It asks if we want to create a new Pactware device catalog. We say yes, and we wait again. The other way you can do it, other than the device catalog tab on the side here, go on view and then click on device catalog or press F3. And you might have to do it a couple of times and it will open up. There it is. Okay, so a couple of ways to get to it. Just make sure you update your device catalog and then you should be good to go. Let's close that out. Now, since we've installed the DTM for the UC4000, the program automatically installed the USB master. So let's go in here and build a tree. When you do that, you go under the project tab and you can see that right now we're in the host PC. The structure for this project tab is to build your way down to the device that you have. So first, we need to add the USB master because we have to go through that to get to Pactware. So we're going to install that. Okay, now that we have the USB master added to the tree, we need to add the UC4000 beneath that. So we will click on the UC4000 and add that device. Okay, now if you notice here, there's a connection status icon. We need to right click here, click on connect, and that will connect the UC4000 to the USB master. We've got a green connection. We have a green connection here. That means that it connected to the host PC, the UC4000 connected to the USB device. So now we can, if you want to see the information about the USB adapter, you can double click on it. And again, everything loads slowly the first time you use it. So here's all the information about the master. It's connected now to port five or COM5 on your computer. So information that you need. If you have issues installing this, it's probably a COM port problem. So you can, uh, if it's not connected, 
go down here, click on this, and select a different COM port. So let's go to the UC4000 and see what we can do with that. The first time you open, or actually every time you open a device, you're going to want to upload the information from the device into Pactware. So we want to upload that so that Pactware has all the relevant and up-to-date data from the device. And you can see the status bar down on the bottom. It's about 30% done now. Pactware will actually read the information that comes in on the DTM file from the IODD file and put the default values for the sensor in when it first opens up. And you can see data transfer happening over here in the menu tree. It's working on parameters now and it jumps back and forth between uh, all of the different uh, data sets that it needs. Okay, so now that it's complete, let's see what the sensor sees. And this is not meant to be a tutorial on how to use Pactware and the UC4000. This is just kind of a quick overview on how to download it and kind of navigate your way a little bit around Pactware and a little short information session on what you can do with it and a sensor. So now you can see uh, observation 1.16 meters from what it saw when the sensor was downloaded. The process data, this is actually 1.725 meters. Now, what, if I would like to see this continually update, there's two little icons up here. One of them is I've, if I want to see just the process data, I can click on this one, go to process data, and you should see it continually update. Okay, there we are. So you can see the little green uh, data transfer icon. However, if I go to observation, it's not changing. So if I want the observation to change and not just the process data, we have an icon for that too. So we'll change the observation data to cyclic also. So you can kind of see it doesn't update as fast as the process data will, but it still updates. And on this particular sensor, you get an echo amplitude, which is kind of nice. You can use that in uh, you know programs that you're using the sensor with in a PLC or some other device that you can read the process data out of. So to stop that, we'll turn both of these off. This is uh, to read the information out of the device. This is to write the information to the device. So just a basic kind of understanding of Pactware. I hope this has been helpful. And if you, if you have any questions about anything, please contact our tech support group at Pepperell and Fuchs and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks for your time and have a great day.